Now we're going to go on. To, now we're going to go on to the real uh, shocker, which is a shocker for a completely different reason. This is Byron Saxton interviewing Raquel Rodriguez on this past Monday's Raw. One sec, and we're back. And yes, I'm sorry, it's got the overlays again, but this is from TikTok that someone's recorded off their laptop of Byron Saxton and Raquel Rodriguez. Have a listen to this. Raquel, at Payback, we saw you nearly dethrone the Eradicator. But now, Dirty Can you Dom is feel the spontaneity, so Dutch. What kind of thoughts are flowing through your it. mind as you prepare for this highly I'm excited already. rematch against the Nightmare for the Women's World Championship? Well, Byron, let's just be honest. Rhea might be the most dominant <laughs> woman to ever step into that ring. Her raw strength and brutality are unlike anything we've ever seen. Rhea has taken over the entire women's division, and it's because people lose to fear before the bell even rings. Give her the Oscar right long. now. I'm not like most people. Yeah, sabe eso. She knows that. And Dirty Dom, well, <laughs> Dom won't be there to help oh, really? her tonight. No, tonight, Rhea's going to get a lesson that reality is worse than a nightmare. Because tonight, Rhea won't <clears throat> be the tallest. Rhea won't be the strongest, and Rhea damn sure as hell won't be the angriest woman to step into that ring. Rhea's gonna get a taste of her own medicine. And we'll see who walks out the women's world champion. Yeah. Yeah, by God. Yeah. Rhea, take take that. By God. Oh, dearie me. Well, this girl, Rodriguez. She need, needs to take a few speaking lessons or acting lessons because that look – and the interview was written like crap, to tell you the truth. And she's the toughest woman in wrestling. Well, no. she sh He should have said she has established herself as one of the toughest. Uh, I think she spread – she gave her a little too much credit, but – See, they can teach them to wrestle. You can't teach them to talk. Now, Eddie Kingston, the interview we just watched, you kind of believe him. But in this one, you go, please get this over with. You said you're embarrassing yourself. And she's she's, she's going to prove she is not the toughest. Did did they have a match? That's, this was on Raw, right? Yeah. Oh, j just before I forget. There's, she also did that thing, which is just the most fake thing in the world for interviews, is do that fake huh, laugh. It's like, oh, you think you're so tough? Huh. Well, I'm going to tell you. And it's like, Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I hate <laughs> Oh, you're picking them apart today, buddy. Of course I am. No, You've got no to, but this this content. is a, uh, this, this girl needs work. And... And we can say that we saw her when she couldn't put like two believable words together. I think this would, but I do appreciate her trying anyway. But whoever produced this interview should have had her do it again and again and again till they got it at least halfway right. But we don't know. This could be the end of 10 interviews. Mm. And they finally just got tired of doing it. And he went back and told Triple H, hey, it sounds like shit. Do it, run it anyway, because we got to run it. I mean, you have to run something uh, if you have an, a spot for her. And no matter really how bad it is, it could have been a lot worse. But this didn't kind of climb the mountain in, in doing an interview. I mm. mean, I didn't believe it, and I don't think little kids believed it. Hey, well, in fairness, no one was watching anyway. They were all watching the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. Uh, are there any particular, when you went back to WWE in the mid-2010s, were there any particular WWE cliches that you just noticed kept coming up in interviews when they were scripting them? Because there's, there's, there's a few, there's like, you know, the whole each and every one of you that always comes up. There's always, uh, today, Byron Saxon, I'm going for the WWE Women's World title. You know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. No one in real life would ever say that. Well, I can only go by what what I had. I had a writer. And he wrote down something one time, like in 1776, you know, the history of the United States. And me being Zeb Coulter, a real American, 
what he had written down wasn't true. And I said, that's not true. They said, oh, we'll just say it anyway. I said, no, Zeb wouldn't say that. Now I said, you guys need to, we need to have a meeting of the minds here. What you want Zeb to be an idiot too? Or do you want him to actually know what he's talking about? Oh, we don't want you to be an idiot. I said, if I say that, I'm an idiot. I said, if I'm just making up something about 1776 and doing something, but it wasn't right. And a, a first year history student could tell you that. So if I'm going to do that, I need to at least have my facts right on history. Uh, they didn't like it. And they said, well, Vince likes it. I said, well, let's go to Vince. And then they said, well, okay, okay. You know, I'll change it a little bit. He changed a little bit. But on the interview, I I just left it out. I mean, what are they going to do? Take a stick and just beat the crap out of me to say it? But I'm not. I mean, they, they did a lot of things like that. Uh, they wanted me to say something one time. And it bordered on really a racist comment. And I told them, uh, I can't say that at all. They said, why not? I said, well, you want me to be a, a constitution loving, but I said, that makes me a, a, a straight up racist if I say that. And I, I got triple H in the back and I says, I don't want to say this, but if you insist. So I went out there and I altered even what they had written down. I, I, I brought it back some. But he told me, he said, go out there and say it, and we can edit it out. So I went out there and said it halfway and come to the back. And then Triple H says, I, I see what you're talking about. It's gone. We're not going to use it. I said, thank God, not going to use that. Because that won't get you any heat. That would just get you some... Well, it actually hurts you to say say stuff like that. So we didn't use it. And my whole time I was there with Triple H, he was the one who actually I talked to the first day when I when I got hired on. And he was always a straight shooter with me, and I could always talk to him. And, you know, they wanted to take that saying to Vince, but Vince don't give a crap. And he would have said, do it, do it, pal. But but the writer was afraid to take it because he wasn't sure of his standing with Vince. And now that writer is gone. He left with Bray Wyatt. When Bray Wyatt, or before Bray Wyatt, he left. I don't know where he went. He's a pretty good guy. But And that's what I suggested in WWE. I said, listen, don't give me a different writer every week. And they said, well, we do that for a reason. I said, why? They said, well, you know, it keeps the, the writer from getting stale. And all. I said, no, if I have the same writer. Now we know what we're, what we're talking about. And they more or less kept me with one writer, though. And the, the writer that wanted me to do the other thing about uh, 1776 he was a substitute writer that week, and I didn't much like him anyway. So, but I got it cleared up, went on my merry way, and it is what it is. And I ended up here today telling that story here on uh, Storytime with Dutch. Mm -hmm. See, you won't hear it anywhere else. Mm -hmm.